Hi, my name is Daniela Rango. I use she, they pronouns. And today we're going to talk about whether or not too much screen time is bad for kids. In conclusion, I will literally tell you, it depends. It can be good and it can be bad. But I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how it's good and how it's bad and what the research says. We're going to be going over three articles and I'm going to talk a little bit about intersectionality and then we'll talk about some conclusions. First article is The Kids Are Online and All Right by Camille Cretendon. It's a peer-reviewed article published in 2019. She talks about some pros and cons. And we'll talk about a little bit of the pros. So adolescents using technology report feeling more connected. It also gives them the opportunity to join communities online that are less exclusive than those that they find at, at school. They can also research topics that are kind of embarrassing and they don't want to tell any adults about. It also plays an important role in contemporary social and emotional development, considering that technology is a huge part of everyone's lives nowadays. It's important for them to understand and have a good develop a good relationship with technology in their youth. It also can lead to in-person civic engagement, which is awesome. It can lead to things like voting, contributing to a campaign, etc. It's also really helps with professional development, um, finding jobs, going to college, finding information related to those topics. And it's also been associated with lowering teen birth rates. Some of the cons of being um, exposed to technology that she talks about are that some of them report a pressure to post positive things, and it can also lead to anxiety or depression. And I think the scariest one of all is that some teens become entangled in exploitative, harassment, abusive type relationships online, which can have real life effects on mental and physical health. The next article is also a peer-reviewed article published in 2020. And before I tell you about the pros and cons of screen time and green time, what is screen time? Screen time is any visual screen-based technology like TVs, computers, tablets, video gaming, things of that nature. And then there's green time, which is very broadly defined as time spent in or exposure to natural environments, elements, or content. Um, some of the pros of screen time are essentially the same as were mentioned in the last article, but they add a little bit more. So it also provides a space for safe identity exploration, which is very important, especially for minoritized identities such as LGBTQ and Black and Indigenous people of color. It can also um, provide information about the world past these kids' immediate surroundings. So it can really open up their worldview without having to go anywhere. Some of the cons of screen time are that it's associated with um, addiction, essentially, by stimulating the hypothalamic pituitary and adrenal access and dopaminergic circuitries of your brain um, by acting on these parts of your brain. And when you create a unhealthy relationship with technology that is affecting your brain, because that's where it's acting upon, it can also lead to real life consequences of your mental well-being and your physical well-being. It also displaces important protective behavior for mental health, i.e. green time. So some of the pros of green time are that it's associated with positive psychological effects. And we're going to talk about two theories as to why this is. So first is, well, it buffers consequences of high screen time by displacing the internet. Um, and the two theories are Kaplan's attention restoration theory, which says that nature has certain restorative effects, especially for our attention. And then there's Ulrich's stress reduction theory, which says that nature induces positive effects to reduce stress. And it also provides feelings of getting away, which is very important for teens, especially because we need to allow our minds to wander, especially when we're trying to find our identities at this point in time. And also it's important to note that as humans, we have a biological preparedness to seek restoration from nature, but we don't have this sort of evolutionary preparedness for technology. So dealing with it is kind of like a new area that no one really knows all that much about. There really are no true cons to green time, but I wanted to make it four boxes. So the real problem with the relationship between screen time and green time is that as technology is becoming more accessible, green time is going down. This combination is what is a problem. 
let's talk a little bit about intersectionality so that we can understand how these problems are affecting different identities. So for low socioeconomic youths, they're more likely to use more screen time and actually live in less green neighborhoods. So that combination is really affecting them. Also, just in general, the teen experience, rumination increases from childhood to adolescence as we are, um, as our brains are developing differently. So if we're replacing rumination with technology, it can either help or hurt depending on what the source of that is. There's also widespread integration of technology and curricula that makes its use virtually inescapable. It's a part of everyday life. Also, social media has really exacerbated the pressure to conform that has existed forever by quantifying acceptance in the form of likes, shares, and follows. So these are things that teens really have to think about on a daily basis. Also, online access is particularly important for depressed adolescents because it can have it can grant them opportunities for self-expression, find communities online so that they can feel less alone if they're not finding communities that they're really feeling secure and connected with in um, real life. And it's also uh, great for getting inspiration from others. And it's important to know also that they are more at risk for using the internet as well. So it always comes down to the quality and quantity of the use of technology because they are more likely to have negative experiences online than non-depressed adolescents. Also, houseless youths need technology in order to stay connected with loved ones via social media, also accessing social services and public transportation. So it's not only about their mental well-being, it's about their survival. Also, Mel different identities of gender and sexualities will search mental well-being uh, at different rates. So straight youth only report using the internet to learn about mental well-being about one third of the time. LGBTQ youth, 75% of the sample um, searches for mental well-being topics, only a quarter of boys and 50% of girls. Um, so different age groups are, I mean, different identities are also at special risk. So let's talk about conclusions. This last article is called, Is Too Much Screen Time Bad for Kids? It's Complicated by Jess Berthold. Um, in conclusion, she splits up her things into a few different questions. So the things that she talks about in the research is essentially what the other research talked about as well, but she also touches on the fact that certain algorithms are addictive. And that's why it's important, again, to keep watching on exactly what it is that our kids are using. The American Academy of Pediatrics used to recommend about two hours of screen time, but now it's more recommended to think about different um, plans depending on what the needs and wants of your family are. And consider using screen-free times or screen-free areas for better monitoring. And then the last thing is the conclusion. I've quoted her directly here because I think she really hits the nail on the head. Screens themselves aren't inherently bad and they're here to stay. We need to learn to live with them. You can still watch movies and have great discussions with friends about them. You can interact with people by video in real time. It's more about how screens are making you feel and whether screen time is displacing things like physical activity. So it's all about balance. We need to be watching how our kids are feeling and how they are reacting and really um, monitor for anxiety and depression and different behavioral issues and how things are changing as technology is used and also making sure that they're not using technology to get away from real life and displacing things like green time or physical activity. In conclusion, technology good, technology bad. It's all balance. Thank you for here. Thank you for listening.